Deputy Smith. Thank you, Chair. Um, Minister, just a couple of things in terms of culture. The first thing I'd like to ask you about is the Creative Schools Initiative. That's obviously a very welcome partnership to see happening with the Department of Education and Skills. I'm just wondering, the Higher Implementation Group and the Arts Education Policy, uh, in terms of the local arts education partnerships, is that something that the Department is still striving towards, or is the Creative Schools, I suppose, has it come out of the... Um, manifesto that was the local arts and education partnerships. Crinu <coughs> uh, no Before that, we had Crinu. Uh, what was it? Crinu Nakasa. I'm just wondering. Um, that was done and it was wonderful. And then we had Crinu no So I'm wondering, is this going to be a continual national day of celebration for young people and children, or is it going to be, I suppose, part one side and Crinu is something else, perhaps the year after? Um, in terms of your promotion of the Irish language, of course, very welcome to your five-year action plan. I know in terms of arts education, your department is probably groundbreaking stuff when you see how it is actually engaging with the Department of Education. I know they're not two departments that would have crossed over too much prior to Creative Schools. So I just wonder if you could talk to us a little bit about your engagement with the Department of Education for perhaps the delivery of Gwale Skulls uh, around the country. Is that something that you're actively involved in or is that just separate? does that just stay clearly with the Department of Education? Um, you touched on, on, on Galway 2020 and um, we had them here in the AV room uh, last week and that's going to be a hugely exciting year for the country, for us globally and internationally. Um, obviously Galway International Arts Festival is something that has huge significance for us as a country, obviously for Galway County. I know from being a regular visitor to Galway Arts Festival, the big need there is for a permanent contemporary arts, uh, visual arts space. And they continually, from year to year, go from temporary building to temporary building. And having visited um, the old post office there, Shop Street, where this year's Contemporary Art Practice exhibition was held, I know there's a real desire to have a permanent home for Galway for the um, <coughs> International Arts Festival and for that aspect or element. Um, and I would hope that it would be something that this government would ensure was left in Galway and probably a legacy of Galway 2020 being European capital of culture. So I just wondered if you could comment on that. Thank you. Uh, Deputy, I might work backwards um, and if, if I leave something out you, you can uh, you can refresh uh, my memory because you, you had a number of different questions there on a number of different topics um, first of all in relation to go away 2020 um, it, you know as I mentioned in my opening statement it is a significant year next year a significant year not just for Galway uh, and obviously Minister Kine has a particular interest uh, in, in the area um, but it's it's also for Ireland uh, in terms of showcasing the culture that we can offer the creativity and, and what we can do as a country. Um, and the, the eyes of, of not just Europe, but the world will, will be on us. Um, so it's a huge honor. Um, and along with Rijeka in, in Croatia, um, that there's, it's going to be uh, really significant what we're going to be able to do. But you have mentioned the, the legacy project. And I think when I, when I was down there uh, launching the, the cultural aspect to it, I did go to visit um, a potential site that they're looking at, uh, which was an old um, on post building. Uh, whether or not that transpires um, is something that remains to be seen, but it's certainly an option that's been looked at. Um, I think there are a number of different options. It, it is one of the main, I suppose, uh, goals that we want to take out of uh, culture or, or Galway 2020 is that we leave a legacy so that it's, 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 it's remembered for, for generations to come and to, to, you know, to continue that creativity and artistic endeavour that people put into the whole project for Galway 2020, that that's continued on and that it has ramifications um, for other people. So then I think you also mentioned in relation to creative youth. So we've expanded um, that programme from um, 150 schools, we've doubled it to 300 this year, and that's going to engage about 100,000 students. Um, so that's quite significant. There's also um, an, in an increased budget of over 6 million uh, in, in for this year, which is combined with the Arts Council as well um, and um, the, the other departments as well, the Department of Children. And there's also three new local creative youth <coughs> partnerships uh, being rolled out through the ETBs, which is in Leash, Offaly and Kerry, 
also in Limerick and Clare. And these are to develop new networks and to enable greater collaboration, collaboration within the local uh, culture and creative communities, and also to complement the work being done in, in the uh, formal school settings. There's also music generation, which I think will increase opportunities for more children and more young people uh, to access um, high quality subs subsidised uh, performance music education uh, with the commencement of five new local music education partnerships. As well as that, uh, there's the National Creativity Fund uh, with 30 exciting new and innovative partnerships and that was launched in 2018 and the projects are now up and running and 15 of these are for children and for young people. Uh, and these include the regional rollout of Fighting Words, Creative Writing Initiative, and the founding of the Open Youth Orchestra of Ireland, which uh, I don't know if you remember it, but it was a, a national youth uh, ensemble for physically and intellectually uh, challenged um, children. So it's the first of its kind in Europe, and it's led by the Royal Irish Academy of, U of Music. And that, I think, was a very exciting thing to start. But continued buy-in from the Department of Education and Skills, uh, which you mentioned, and the Arts Council, and increased support um, in relation to the early years setting remain uh, really important for the continued success um, of the initiative. Um, what else was there? The Crinu Ninog, I think you mentioned as well, uh, which is a, a national day uh, for creativity for children. I think your specific question was, will it continue? Yes, uh, we, we want it to continue. The year before was, was um, Quinnu Nikoska, uh, which in itself was, was a great celebration. I think Quinnu Nanog is even more successful and has great benefits for children and engaging them. It's the, we're the first country in the world, actually, uh, to have a day dedicated just for children's creativity. Um, so it's quite cutting edge in that sense. And the feedback, particularly from rural local communities, uh, has been really positive. And it's a way of getting children uh, involved in supporting um, <coughs> local artists and voluntary arts groups as well. Um, it's run through the culture and creativity teams at local authority level primarily, and it took place um, on the 15th of June, I said in my statement, in, in June, and with about 780 events. And this, uh, yeah, so there's about, yeah, I think about 55,000 children approximately who actually engage in it. So it's, it's, really, uh, it's really a great day. There's also three new, new young ambassadors, which I mentioned as part of Quinn in 2019. And there was also a full citizen engagement plan, which we rolled out, including a partnership with RTE. And the programme showed increased attendance and increased diversity events uh, available for children and for young people. So I think that was positive as well. I think... Um, in relation to the Gael Scullina, obviously the recognition of Gael Scullina is important uh, to my department and there have been problems in this regard and it's an issue, an issue really primarily for the Minister uh, for Education. But I understand that a number of new Gael Scullina were announced recently following an intervention uh, from the Language Commissioner and I think that announcement was, I believe, widely welcomed. However, as I said, uh, it, it is mainly a matter for the Minister for Education. I think that's all your questions. Yeah.